Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. In my interactions with seekers, one conversation which bothers me is when seekers share that they don't have role models. Yesterday I had shared that Puja Swami Tapovana is an icon of fearlessness. He had shared that he was born with death and now is going to return to his friend. For everyone who's seen Avatara, the way of water, <laughs> that tube of anti-aging serum sells for $80 million. <laughs> See how afraid we are of, of dying. Yet, not Puja Swami Tapovana. Another role model is Martin Luther King Jr., an icon of selflessness. Here's a quote from him. This is when he was marching for having integrated schools in America. This was in 1959. We put in so much effort for EDI now. Imagine how hard it would have been back in the day and how selfless he was, he is. I love this quote. Make a career of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a better person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. Lovely. Meaningful Mornings is a workshop to train ourselves to changing from not wanting a role model. Only those who don't want a role model don't recognize role models to being open to role models, to following such role models. Prince Arjuna wants to be closer to Sri Krishna. He prays for this. And Sri Krishna answers his prayer by removing Prince Arjuna's conditioning or sense of separation. Sri Krishna has always been the closest to Prince Arjuna. But Prince Arjuna didn't see it or feel it. I want you to reflect on this removal. I was with a seeker recently. She was visiting us in Niagara. And I sensed how nervous she was. <laughs> and I asked her, why are you nervous being here? And she said, you. <laughs> And I shared with her, you think all I have to do is judge you right now. <laughs> I'm not judging you. <laughs> and she changed. And my point was, she removed her own conditioning, her own sense of separation. In verse 10, Sri Krishna shares with Prince Arjuna, see all of this incomparable loveliness, specifically 
in the forms of all of these mouths and eyes and ornaments and weapons. These are the specifics. And he shares in general, see all of these wonders. What Sri Krishna is teaching in a most causal way is tattvamasi. If a mouth is divine and an eye is divine and an ornament is divine and a weapon, let's say my hands, the implication is I am divine. If an ornament is divine, obviously the person wearing that ornament has to be divine. Did you catch that? I'll share this in a different way. Many times I've shared with you that you have only experienced the present. And for many of us, that's just poetry. You're just saying that, Vivekji. But think. Even if I asked you to rewind to the beginning of Meaningful Mornings on March 19th, 2020, how are you doing that? You're doing that through the present, correct? If I ask you to fast forward to March 20th of 2023, when we start our next year, how are you doing that? In the present. So Vivek points out to you that even in the past, you're in the present. Even in the future, you're in the present. What has always been becomes more apparent. Did you catch that? <laughs> it's January. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> Fine. I'll connect this to Srimad Bhagavatam. A recent teaching in Srimad Bhagavatam is, if one understands and appreciates that we all have the same spirit, then the automatic value that is converted into a virtue is non-possessiveness. If I feel you and I are one, how can that be yours and this be mine? So I'm going to read to you a really lovely sharing that a seeker shared with me this morning. Haryom Vivekji, I am humbled with the realization that I don't have to own anything to be content. I am just grateful that I was given the opportunity along with the ability to help in a small way. Much gratitude to you for guiding the change in me. Just feel how free you would be if those senses of yours and mine became weaker. We're all reflecting on what is enlightenment, what is liberation. That's what it is. It is this relative experience of freedom, the daily experience of freedom, that leads to the absolute forever experience of freedom. Sri Krishna continues in verse 11. Divya Malyambaradharam Divya Gandanu Lepanam Sarvas Charyamayam Devam Anandam Vishwato Mukham. A lot of similar sounding verses. I'll go through the whole verse. Divya means lovely or divine. What is Malya, which means malas or garlands or necklaces and ambara clothing dhara means the necklace and the clothing that is wear, uh, being worn the word divya is used again means lovely divine gandan ulepanam shri krishna is specifically sharing chandan like i'm wearing right now which is sandalwood paste but more generally, ointments. It could be turmeric, it could be creams, it could be cologne. 
all of those matters. Sarva Ashcharya Mayam Devam, all Ashcharya is wonderful. Maya filled with this wonderfulness. It is Devam that shines. Tune into the word all. He is showing Prince Arjuna specifics, like I told you, the mouths and the ointments, but this is all training to feel that all is lovely. All is divine. Ananda, endless. Vishwato mukam, in every direction. What Pujaswami Tejo Mayananda shared externally is Sri Krishna's form is extending to the sky. And we're taught that what's above earth? Heaven. So the fact that he extends to the sky shows that everything inside of him, everything about him is heavenly. So that's what the word divya means. But internally, remember chapter 11 and chapter 10, they're a path, the beginning path, the end path. In chapter 10, you are good. This is great. Within the great, there is the greatest. But what's beyond the greatest? Please share in the chat. What's beyond the greatest? It's only three letters. It shouldn't take, <laughs> take that long. Thank you. <laughs> That's what Sri Krishna is showing now. From the greatest to God. At the beginning of chapter 10, he said, I am the source. At the end of chapter 10, he said, I am the source. This is what he's now showing Prince Arjuna. What a teacher. Literally holding his hand all the way to the end. These verses have similar teachings, so I'm going to digress. I'm going to move in the lateral to how we can practice these verses. Every summer, I facilitate three youth camps for high school students, June, July, and August. This year, from June 12th to the 16th, I will be in Houston. From July 24th to the 28th, I will be in Chantilly. And from August 7th to the 11th, I'll be in Boston and I'll be teaching our youth. Now, which youth come, get to come to these camps? Are there any barriers to entry? Do you have to be a certain skin color? Do you have to know a certain language? In these verses, Sri Krishna is using words like aneka, which means countless. Really, that means all-inclusive. He says sarva, which means all all-inclusive. Divya, all have the same nature as him. We see this, but we have to feel this. And this is why on Christmas, on December 25th, our community began an effort to support LGBTQ young people. When I say youth, I don't just mean Vivek's kids. When I say youth, I don't just mean Americans. But we tend to have that propensity, yes? And that's why it's important for us to practice serving society because that's what Sri Krishna is teaching. We are supporting the Trevor Project. This is an organization that empowers LGBTQ young people, all youth. And one thought for you, one accepting adult, in other words, one adult who practices verses 10, 
verses 9, verses, verse 11 and 12, they decrease the risk of suicide by 40% of such youth. Practice these verses. 9, 10, 11, 12. From inspiration to application. I've already shared an application. Here's more. Yesterday, your application was to feel that every eye you look at has been transplanted, that that's actually Sri Krishna's eyes. How many of you practice this? Cool. If you did, I feel you would have raised your own standard of behavior. If I know that Sri Krishna is watching me, I'm going to speak more softly. I'm going to act more gently. Now, don't intellectualize this. Sri Krishna is sharing, I am all Nayana. So Vivek's rad to you is not just some made-up gimmick. This is the truth. When you start to feel that all eyes are Sri Krishna's, you start to live like Sri Rama then. Remember who's the standard of goodness? Sri Rama. Your application for the coming morning is to research. Chapter 11, verse 12. It is one of the most famous verses of all of Bhagavad Gita in reference to Oppenheimer's description of a nuclear bomb in reference to the book A Thousand Splendid Suns. The source of all of that is coming up in the next verse. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joyous.